A young boy named Holden Price flees the home while someone points a gun at him. He claims that because his generation does not believe in God, man, or government, people assume that they will be the worst generation. He runs until he reaches a river and is then unable to continue running. When the pursuant draws a gun close to him, he claims that at that point in his life, all he can think of no one he can trust. Everything began a day ago. Two detectives set up the camera for Holden's interview while he is in the interrogation room. He is asked if he agrees to be recorded by the woman Clarkson. Additionally, Morno, the second detective, begs him to tell the truth. Throughout the interview, he introduces himself at the beginning of the interview. Holden is the son of shoe company owner and successful businessman Mason Price. Years have passed since the parents' divorce, and none of them have remarried. His mother passed away about two years ago. He received his Harvard degree last spring. He talks about Mason and shares how, while growing up in a divided family, Mason taught him never to have hope in anyone. Mason took care of him. He made sure he went to the top high school. He never lacked money. He could afford to travel the world because he had money. Mason made sure he could attend Harvard. And he is always involved in anything involving money. However, if there is any other duty, expect Mason to be absent. After graduating from college and spending more than two years traveling throughout England, he receives a call from Mason asking him to come to Chicago. He has been traveling for about two years, so going to Chicago would be a great break for him, so that seems like a great idea. He believes that traveling to Chicago to see his father after a two-year absence will be beneficial and bring the two of them closer together. He hopes that his trip to Mason won't be just another money-related visit. He has high expectations when he travels to Chicago, but when he enters, he makes a noise that frightens Madeline. Making a turn, Madeline spots him. Holden asks Madeline about Mason. And Madeline replies, not after insulting him for being away for about two years. She gives him a passionate hug and welcomes him. Mason has a surprise for him up there that he told her not to share with him. Mason wants it to be father to son, according to Madeline. Secret to meet his father, Holden goes upstairs. He then opens the room and opts as he would have on a regular day. In the room, he finds a woman who is nearly naked. He says sorry and acknowledges his ignorance of her presence before shutting the door. Mason greets him and is happy to see him. Mason says he has a surprise for them as they hug. The woman inside the room answers when he calls her by her pet name, Sweetheart. He calls the woman Lana and declares his love for her in front of Holden. Holden assumes Lana is his girlfriend and inquires about their dating history. Mason claims that she is his wife, and the two of them are already legally wed. Holden obviously finds this shocking. When Mason notices, he appears to be unhappy as he walks away with Mason. When Mason inquires if he is happy for him, he replies that he is simply shocked and hasn't processed the information. He asks Mason why he kept the marriage a secret from him, and Mason responds that he wanted to surprise him and it would have been worth the wait. Mason then informs him that he will have an opening night at a museum that will bear his name, and everyone is leaving. Holden moves toward Lana, who is holding her bedroom robe as Mason gets ready. Mason and Harry are introduced at the party. He says that Harry was the one who persuaded him to donate a significant sum of money to a museum. Harry responds that Alana was the one who persuaded him. Mason also introduces Harry to Holden as his lawyer as Harry gives Lana a seductive hug. Mason is asked by Harry to assist in persuading the guest about the fundraising. So Lana is asked to hold the round while Mason pursues his own agenda with Harry. Lana and Aishi shuts him up and tells him it will be their little secret when Holden apologizes for opening the door to her room. She remarks that he looks like his father and inquires about the number of schoolgirls whose hearts he broke. He discusses Stacy, his ex-girlfriend who dumped him prior to graduation, with Lana. Soon after, Lana asks to leave and heads over to meet Harry. Before presenting Nicole, a girl, to Holden, she gives him a hug and speaks to him. Holden is introduced to Nicole, who she will be running with. Nicole also agrees that Holden is adorable. She tells Holden to forget Stacy during the auction and leaves Nicole with him. Lana receives a lovely gift from Mason in the form of jewelry, and they travel back home with Harry. When Harry says he is leaving, Lana hugs and kisses him while wearing her pretty necklace at home. When Mason offers to see Harry off, Lana is grabbed by the neck and he asks her what she told Harry at the party. She tries to persuade him that she was genuinely trying to love Harry. He squeezes her neck and tells her it's not a good look to see her flirting with his staff despite the fact that she is doing good work and not doing so, to behave properly. Holden calls his father. Mason also stops the following day. Holden notices lawn care. He approaches her and speaks about what transpired the previous evening. She assures him that she is fine though. Arriving Mason makes a call to Holden. He shows Holden a car he recently purchased, which he refers to as his pet, in his garage. He takes Holden to his workplace and informs him that they will be spending the day together. Mason interrupts his date with Holden when he receives a call for a union meeting as they approach the location. Holden then goes back home. Holden touches her underwear on the bed while gazing at Lana in her room. 
He quickly drops it when she walks in and informs her that his engagement to Mason has been cancelled. To enable them to go out together, Lana offers to take a bath. She drives Mason's new car after getting dressed, telling Holden that she can always calm Mason down if he gets upset that she used the car. He asks her to drive to a nearby bar after she promises to take him to one of her favorite places. He is surprised that she would pick that location as her favorite. Additionally, they assume the owner is away when they knock. She declines his suggestion that they visit another bar, claiming that the proprietor used to leave his keys there. They enter after she takes the keys. She responds that the bar reminds her of her roots when he asks her why she enjoys it so much. The small community where people only drink and hook up. After drinking, they pass out. They hide when the bar owner shows up. When the owner walks away, they begin kissing as they lean against one another. They have an intimate moment on the pub table before heading home. Holden overhears Lana and Mason arguing at home. On Madeline's birthday the following morning at breakfast, Mason arranges for her to go on a week-long spa vacation. Additionally, he informs Holden that he has invited Nicole to join them for dinner that evening. While playing basketball with Holden, Mason hits him in the stomach to remind him not to drive again. Later that evening, Lana meets Holden in the kitchen, where they immediately begin kissing. They exchange kisses and stay in the space. Lana hides in the cabinet when Mason notices her absence and comes to look for her. Holden also claims that he hasn't seen her. Nicole shows up to eat. Holden mentions his interest in architecture and his desire to further his education during dinner. But he warns him that he doesn't have any more money to waste on him and demands that he come up with a concrete plan. Lana and Holden cross paths again that evening. And Holden claims Mason wants to control him. After having sex, Mason requests to go hunting with Holden the following day. He queries Holden about Lana's current activities while hunting. Holden, however, denies any knowledge. Holden wants to kill Mason as he hunts, but he is unable to. He meets Lana outside the house, and they engage in sexual activity. They leave, and as he travels, he encounters a man who briefly stops him. Holden learns that his father has been killed when he gets home. He claims he was at the theater that day when he and Lana are taken in for questioning. Lana claims to have been with Nicole after their encounter when she got home and Nicole has video of their after-dinner antics. Harry also makes a call to Holden to express his suspicions that the person Lana was seeing was the perpetrator. Harry discovers that Holden is making up both his alibi and the fact that he received the video of Lana having sex with him at the bar from an unnamed source. Harry suspects Lana may be accusing Holden of being involved in his father's death because he is the only executor of Mason's will. She will therefore inherit the properties once Holden is behind bars. When he gets home, he discovers Lana has taken care of everything. Mason's car contains a suicide note that she has written. She enters when Holden discovers the note. He fears that she intends to attack him. He then flees. She claimed that she was merely checking the garage. Harry is visited, and he is shown the note. Lana has since retreated at this point. Holden explains the situation, and Nicole admits that Lana asked her to record them and that she and Lana are in a relationship. The beggar also provides Holden's alibi, resulting in his release. Later, Harry reveals to Holden that the lethal poison Lana used that evening while gardening was responsible for the death of his father. When Nicole shows up while Holden is home alone, he reveals that she is Stacy, and that everything was planned by them. They were also responsible for Mason's poisoning. They apparently planned their betrayals ever since they coincidentally happened to be on the island when Mason got married to Lana. Stacy therefore poses as Nicole in order to approach Lana and Mason. Additionally, Stacy was the one who pretended to be Lana in the airport. When he asks if Lana was killed, she replies that Lana fell off the cliff. When they arrive, they discover Lana's necklace. They believe she is dead. Stacy then departs. Lana visits Holden that evening carrying a gun. He is shot, and she pursues him while carrying a gun. Prior to killing him, she is shot by the police, and she then tumbles off a cliff. Holden conducts his father's funeral before announcing his departure to Harry. He departs with Stacy, and this is where the film ends.